Good evening, Boo 2. As we prepare for the New Year's celebration, Flint Town Boy, one last video for 2017. It's 5.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Sunday, December the 31st, 2017. And I welcome you to the last Flint Town Boy broadcast of 2017. 17. I don't know what I'm actually going to talk about because I don't ever script these get togethers that we have. Uh, I had today off. Uh, good for me. Excuse me. Uh, I think my Broncos are down 7 0 to the Kansas City Chiefs to Pittsburgh Steelers. One, they will be the second uh, team with the Actually, actually, they have the same record as the New England uh, Patriots and uh, the uh, New England New England Patriots because of that bogus ass call that they had in Pittsburgh get home field. So uh, that uh, that bitch ass call that New New England always seem to get all the fucking calls. I'm so fucking sick of New England, but uh, I am looking at the. Uh, Atlanta Falcons against the uh, Carolina Panthers. Falcons are up 7-0. Uh, Cleveland was uh, moving uh, the ball the ball down the field in that uh, Steelers-Browns game, and uh, Pittsburgh stopped them at the end. Um, who cares about what the Broncos are doing? The Broncos uh, are looking forward to – the Broncos have been looking forward to uh, – Next season for about a month, maybe a month and a half, when they got on that, uh, <clears throat> what was it, a six, seven game losing streak. So uh, we, well, we as the uh, Denver Broncos, have <clears throat> been looking forward to the 2018, 2019 season for almost two months now. My Pittsburgh Steelers uh, should come out of the AOC this year. I can't take no more of the New England Patriots. <clears throat> but good evening and welcome to the uh, more than likely the uh, last YouTube video that I am going to do for 2017. It's been a year to remember, guys. Uh, I... Uh, I'm in a better place financially than I was actually a year ago. You know, I feel good because last year, uh, going into this year, the uh, most high was letting me know that uh, last year going into this year was stability. <clears throat> my main job, my main source of income is the job that I have working with the public. Uh that job I will have for two years in April. And the uh, place where I'm staying now next month will be my 16th month here. So uh, no, no more going from place to place. Stability, you know. Uh, Y'all allows you to go through certain things for a reason. And uh, I have learned a lot. I have grown a lot. I'm much wiser. <clears throat> I'm much stronger than I was, uh, let's say, March of 2016. Uh, I have a better perspective on certain things that I was going through in 2016 into 2017. And um, I understand them better. I see what y'all was trying to work out in me, what he was trying to build in me. And um, I'm feeling good going into 2018. 2018, I keep hearing everybody say that's the year of prosperity. I truly believe that. Um, every now and then, I like to talk to you about uh, derivatives, stocks, bonds, money market accounts. I am really going to... Uh, hunker down and start getting into this investment thing in 2018. I'm looking to go 
and take this to another level. Now, I will say relationship wise, I, uh, I have a lot of, uh, my, my younger brother told me he was MGTOW before MGTOW had a day. You know, I have some it more slash MGTOW, you know, it more is more for, uh, black men. Uh, I have a lot of MGTOW and it more belief systems in me, just like I have a lot of Hebrew Israelite belief systems in me. Um, I'm not going to say, for instance, that I am a uh, man, you know, MGTOW or a more. I'm not going to say that. I just believe a lot of their, believe, I actually believe in a lot of their philosophy, you know, their ideology. Um, but I, w- I would say for a lot of men, that is probably your best bet to be, is to be MGTOW or more. Because of the climate that we're in with this worshiping of bitches in the United States of America is uh, it's sad. And you're looking at the city of Flint, Michigan. And this photo is old because you can see the uh, pavilion is still basically uh, white in this picture. It's basically University of Michigan blue now. And it's been that way for a while. Uh, but this is a picture of downtown Flint, Michigan. And um, I don't know. Um, I can't, you know, for the last week, we've been putting up with uh, brutally cold temperatures. And they're going to continue for at least another week or close to another week. We're not going to get back in the 30s for a while. We have been getting highs of teens and single digits. I can't, at my age, put up with this weather anymore. And so, uh, I don't know. I might have to be contemplating uh, leaving Flint again. Uh, Not going to say for sure. But uh, if not this year, I might be contemplating that next year. I don't know. You know, who knows what the future will bring. But... uh, I am uh I am energized, charged up. You know, I'm pro black, pro black conscious. And uh I hate to see what's going on with Dr. Umar Johnson and Tariq Nasheed. That big uh feud that started uh that heated up over this, you know, a few days ago. Uh and I'm pretty sure Tariq is going to elaborate on that. Well, he said he's he was done with it. Uh Umar responded to Tariq Sunday broadcast last week and then Tariq came back this was about two three days ago where Tariq came back on Dr. Umar Johnson and um uh you know um yeah I was wondering should I yeah I might should uh trying to think should I play the videos uh I don't know I don't know uh I don't know we'll figure it out uh so just like to say uh guys it's 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 been a good year uh, am I where I want to be at? No, but I'm doing a lot better than I was, uh, let's say, March of 2016. Uh, I am, uh, I'm like I said, a few months ago, I think that was in August or September, I am in a peaceful place in my life at this time and point in my life. Um, and I know it's only going to get better. I don't like to tell people what I actually want to do. Because people will hate on you and try to uh, tear your uh, dreams down. So I'm not going to, I don't announce big things like what I want to do in the, uh, what you would call long term, my career wise. Um, I don't even announce that to people. And this is even family members uh, until I go into that endeavor. 
and I start to succeed in that endeavor, then I can say, aha, I told you so. Because if I do it before then and then you fail, they'll be like, well, he wanted to do this, but he didn't. And, uh, you know, you're a failure. So I don't let people know about that um, until I actually do it and start succeeding in it. So you won't. Uh, you won't. You uh, won't be able to hate on me so um let me see uh you of course had the vegas shooting this year the wildfires in uh southern california uh what else you had quite a bit of things this year that transpired um trying to think of some of the other things uh Oh, you had the disaster in Puerto Rico. Uh, just a lot of stuff that uh, went on this year. And uh, Flint Town Boy wants to tell you, for those of you who subscribe to my channel, I love you, man. I love you, man. Love you, man. <laughs> I'm going to put this on both of my channels. And uh, I didn't. I don't. Well, I probably can uh, elaborate on more stuff. Uh, I don't know, you know, so, like I say, I don't script these videos. I've never thought of myself as a content creator. Uh, if I did, I would be on here singing, you know, cause that's what I used to do. Uh, but, uh, I could probably start a tech channel where I could get into, uh, techie stuff. Um, but I, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking about that. I might do that in 2018. Like Flint Town Boy, as you know him, might be totally destroyed. You got to remember that my original Flint Town Boy channel is a personal diary of my life. Flint Town Boy, the second coming. I don't even know what that is yet. I, I hope that I get more clarity on just what that page is, uh, what, what niche that page is uh, actually in because I make my channels because I feel feel led to make them, but I don't know where they're going. And right off the bat, my Flint Town Boy original page just seemed to be a page of my personal diaries of my life. That's why I tell you when I left Flint and moved to Phoenix for six months, I wish I would have chronicled that on YouTube, but I didn't. <clears throat> So many events that took place when I was in Phoenix from uh, me getting my first job down there to me getting my first apartment uh, to me getting fired from the airport. Um, it, it, it was a uh, eye opening experience. You know, Flint, Michigan is a city of 100, maybe 102,000 people, which still makes it a, ma a major city. But man, Phoenix had 1.3 million. And I stayed out in Glendale, and Glendale had, like, I think 200 some thousand. So Glendale, a suburb of, uh, that's what I was telling people. Like, Phoenix is so big because it's the fifth or the sixth. It might be the fifth biggest city in America now. Um, it's so big. Even the suburbs are a lot bigger than Flint. Now, when you get into these major metropo metropolitan cities, these, these suburbs are bigger than the uh, actual city of Flint, Michigan. Now, when you start getting into the uh, Los Angeles suburbs and you start getting into the uh, Phoenix suburbs and the Atlanta suburbs, the suburbs are a lot bigger than our city of Flint, which is huge compared to our little suburbs where you go into suburbs where you have seven, eight, nine, ten thousand, twelve thousand 10,000, 12,000 people. You know, those are our suburbs. You get into like the Phoenix and the Los Angeles suburbs, you're talking about hundreds of thousands. <clears throat> so the magnitude of the size is just a tremendously different. Uh, you know, Phoenix was a little too big for me. It took me down there all. It took me at least a good four months to feel comfortable in Phoenix. You know, uh, Phoenix is uh, huge. It's big and it's hot. <laughs> uh, those two things stand out right off the bat. But it taught me that I could live, I could thrive, and I could achieve stuff in a huge metropolitan city. 
in a major metropolitan city. Um, so uh, I, it took me a little while to get used to the size and the aggressiveness of the way people drove and stuff. But uh, all in all, I would say, you know, I survived. You know, I always tell people I am a survivor, you know. I've been pretty much taking care of myself since I was a teenager. And um, that's one thing about me. I know how to survive. But I know how to survive in a law-abiding way, not in an illegal activity way. I'm not knocking nobody for that. But uh, I am a uh, law-abiding citizen person that can survive uh, on very little and make it go a long way. But uh, but nonetheless, I am a survivor. Um, yeah, just reflecting back on this year, uh, we lost a lot of uh, famous people this year. Uh, we had the election of Donald Trump, which happened... Uh, well, Donald Trump was already elected this time last year, but he had not uh, been sworn in yet. That was January the 20th, which he's not even been in there a year yet. That's still a few weeks away. Um, but I was wondering, um, the, the one thing that gets me, and because i just seen this recently, is, uh, and I don't want to always harp on black women, but one thing I say about black women a lot is they don't seem to know what, where is all this confusion with whose side you're on, whose team you're on. They have convinced black women to believe that they are woman first, <clears throat> whereas other races of women believe that they are whatever race they are first. I think Chronicles of Judah always talk about that, that, uh, gender is first with black women <clears throat> and race is probably third or fourth to the black woman <laughs> which is sad and she wonders why she always ends up in the predicament that she ends up in but it was just amazing to me and over the years the 22 23 years that i have been working how black women coddle and they're in on this uh, coddling of sorry, lazy ass white males. <clears throat> For those of you who have worked with white men your whole life, you you pretty much know they're lazy as shit, and they're not gonna really do anything more than they have to do, because this system is set up to actually uh, benefit them, and they don't have to work hard. They just show up and be white. I would say from working with white people all my life. I would generally say white women are a little are actually harder working than white men. White men are lazy. They're shiftless and everybody covers for them. Black women, white women, other white men coddle them. And I'm talking about young. These are young white men on my job that are lazy as shit. <clears throat> You know, if it wasn't a union job, the one white guy that, that came in back in June when I took my vacation, <clears throat> he'd have got fired in June. He'd have got fired in June. He's only still there because he's white. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, he's worthless as dog shit. And then the other guy that just came in maybe a month ago, he's even more worthless. And it's just amazing to me how black women can sit up and see every thing that black men do wrong, every fucking thing. They talk shit about you um, and beat you down and degrade you and belittle you. But the white male can be effeminate, uh, sissified. Lazy as fuck, worthless as hell, and black women will act like they don't see none of that. <clears throat> you know, and I just keep asking asking this question: Why is it so hard for black women to figure out who team they're on? Why is it so confusing? You know, it, 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 your team is your race. You know, Dr. Claude Anderson talks about that a lot. 
group group economics. You know, what the way the team goes, the way everybody goes, you know, in the black community, everybody operates on individual individualism. That's why we're in the shape we're in. But why is where is all this confusion coming in with the black woman? You know, why in the hell does she not know who team she's on? You will never be team white supremacy. You could be a you're the guard dog for white supremacy. The white man has corrupted you so much in this country that you have become my enemy, but you will never be on team white supremacy. You can forget about that. You'll never be Miss Ann. No, but I just, it's just amazing to me how black women, and, and if you say something about a trifling white male, they get so offended. They just really don't know who team they're on. They're embarrassing at this point. You know, I mean, at least know who team you on. <clears throat> or should I say, at, at least know who team you're not on. <laughs> You know, that's pretty clear who team you're not on. It's a lot of teams you're not on <laughs> that you always try to uh, hitch your caboose to. I might come back with another video. I don't know. I might do a live stream and uh, count down the uh, New Year's, uh, count down when they drop the ball in Times Square. I don't know. So I am going to get on up out of here for now. It is a uh, 5.36 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Sunday, December the 31st, 2017, the last day of uh, 2017, Flint Town, boy, downtown Flint, Michigan. That's what you're looking at. That's where I'm at. Deuces.